Over the next 25 years, the way people live and work will change as never before in human history. Unpredictability and uncertainty will continue to shape people's lives. AI, genetic engineering, robotics, quantum technology, and the continual fusion of man and machine will launch entirely new dimensions of thinking and acting. These technologies all pose philosophical questions on human life and its role in the universe. The climate crisis has a dramatic global impact. It's not a question of whether climate change will occur, but how we can deal with its consequences. Regions with the highest population density will be hit the hardest. Millions will be forced to migrate. By 2050, two-thirds of the world's population will live in cities. The number of individuals aged 65 or over will double to 1.5 billion. Democracy faces increasing challenges, radical new technologies, impending economic crises, and environmental migration will further threaten democracies. Now, more than ever, a society of understanding will need to combine information in creative ways. Knowledge is power, evolves into creativity is power. Digitization and automation will lead to a dramatic transformation of labor markets. Heisenberg's uncertainty principle teaches us to accept uncertainty as a fundamental component of the universe. New professions require new skills, critical thinking, dealing with complexity, creativity. Education has to provide the capability to deal with uncertainty and ambiguity, think in alternatives, change perspectives, search for unusual connections, utilize intuition and imagination, predict the mechanisms of fundamental technologies and their potential societal impacts. To shape the future, we need to know both the alphabet of the sciences and the alphabet of the arts. Welcome everybody to Dare, Care and Share from the University of Applied Arts as the contribution of the evening, as a contribution in the evening for the conference on the same terms from the Society for Artistic Research by the MDV, University of, Applied, of Performing Music and Performing Arts Vienna, Academy of Fine Arts in Vienna and the University of Applied Arts. This is our take, our contribution to this very event as the first evening event here. And as we've just seen, it is about the need to know the alphabet of the sciences and alphabet of the arts together to get a different urgent understanding maybe towards the current urgent necessities and to explore this, it is important to dare, to share, and to care. And to apply this knowing and exploration via understanding, it is needed to take a stand. So after setting the agenda regarding urgency with this introductory film regarding challenge, it is our pleasure and mine speaking in my role as appointed moderator on behalf of the research field at the Angewandte, together with Rector Gerald Bast and with uh, Vice Rector Barbara Putzbleko, to share with you three possible approaches of artistic research practice as past pro toto, exemplary, coming from the Angewandte's ecosystem of collaboration. And this is a part within connection with many others. And therefore, please check out also in the conference, if you're participating there, the Angewandte Kiosk, which you can find on the calendar and environment of the conference, or at the Angewandte itself, with all its documentation about its research activities. But three of those projects have been invited to share with us their practice. And for that, 
specifically videos, films have been produced to provide something as one could call a shorter blick, a glance above the shoulder on the practice happening in those connections with those colleagues involved as exemplary for the university in total. And this will be followed by a brief introduction, those three films will be followed by a brief introduction about research at Angewandt in general, and concluded with a conversation with the representatives of the three approaches. The first film will be from Margrethe Jamann and introduce you to her work and to tools, if you want to call them that way, in use for her research. Margrethe Jamann is a media epistemologist and a renowned artist on topics of activism, urbanity, and play. She's the designer of numerous game artworks, research and play installations, performances, as well as exhibition and urban games. And she holds a professorship in the artistic PhD program, artistic research PhD program at the Angewandte and game design at the University of the Arts Zurich. The second film will make you familiar with the Angewandte Performance Laboratory and introduce you to a new unit at the Angewandte. The Angewandte Performance Laboratory is a transversal artistic research and education platform that focuses on the relationship between the body, perception, and the arts and society in a post-digital context. Its purpose is to serve as an incubator to promote performance as an artistic medium and as a field of research. I'm happy to have Peter Kotzek, Babis Ruder, and Lucy Strecker with us in the discussion later. And the third film will lead you to, the ex to experience the work of Nicolas Ganstere with this particular certain angle of a Schulterblick, one could say. And he studied transmedia art at the University of Applied Arts itself in Vienna and completed his studies also at the Jan van Eyck Academy at Maastricht in the Netherlands. He's co-founder of the Institute of Transacoustic Research and since 2007, he's teaching at the University of Applied Arts here. As an artist performer and researcher, Nicolas Ganser is deeply interested in relations between drawing, thinking, and action. And he has been a key figure in the field of artistic research internationally, also with projects like choreographic figures, deviations from the lines, and also now currently with his project of kin contingent agencies. And let me also, uh, both of those projects funded by the Austrian Science Fund under the umbrella of the PEAK program. And also the collaborators I just introduced before, uh, Margrethe Jamann is leading a PEAK project from the Austrian Science Fund. And also Lucy Strecker is working in the context of such a funding opportunity. So, let us now experience the different ways to work, the with different practices in the next half hour so or so in with the three films. Thank you very much. Later we will discuss the contents of those and find new approaches around these particular works. Thank you.
Level 1. The installation is conceptualized as self-referential second-order experiment. Each observer entering the space is immediately trapped by an optic flow detection and involuntarily becomes an observed subject in an emotion expression experiment. Through the collection of a neural network with its implicit biases, in our case against the human species, with face recognition, object classification and creative deep dreaming. The AI gets into an endless circuit loop. In I want to see happy monkeys. Level 2. The internal operations of the artificial neural network become transparent in real time. The filtering by the first network layers is expressed in all the major versions of the input image, which turn more and more abstract. Black pixels in the deep layer of the network that correspond to particularly active neural assemblies or cells. Changing lines indicate in a game treasure map which connections of the different deep layers of the network finally lead to recognition, performance and decision making. Level 3. A deep dream algorithm in the background. Iteratively modifies the algorithm's memory so that recognized faces are successively classified as different species of apes and monkeys. The stronger the emotions of the death subject become in the eye of the AI, the deeper the dream image of the system evolves. Only false memories remain, corresponding to the biases hidden in the network layers of projections of multi-thousand dimensional vector space. Visitors become players, interacting test subjects, memorized by the dreaming artificial AI as sentient apes. Deep dream memory, said gorilla. But the goal to see only happy monkeys fails.
Test, 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 testen, test, testen, testen, testen. Test, eins, zwei, eins, zwei, test, 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 test. Die Testenden und zu Testenden befinden sich in der ersten Phase eines Übergangsritus, der Trennungsphase. Sie lösen sich aus ihrem Alltagsleben und entfremden sich ihrem Milieu. Over and out. Die Testenden und zu Testenden befinden sich nun in der zweiten Phase des Übergangsritus, der Schwellen- und Transformationsphase. Diese versetzt sie in einen Zustand zwischen den Möglichkeiten. Dieser Schwellenzustand wird ihnen Zugang zu neuen, unbekannten Erfahrungen in einem fremden Milieu ermöglichen. Over and out. Die Testenden und zu Testenden befinden sich nun in der Inkorporationsphase. Sie werden in ein neues Milieu integriert und von den dort geltenden Systemkräften akzeptiert. Mission accomplished. Over and out. Testen, testen, testen. Testen. Testen, testen, testen. Testen, testen.
So you could not come to Vienna, but somehow you experienced parts of this environment of this ecosystem at the Angewandte in terms of research. And specifically, you were able to experience the practice happening um, in certain approaches of the artistic research here at the University of Applied Arts. Uh, but for Before we start with the roundtable discussion, the interaction of the protagonists of those three approaches, we would love to share with you um, a kind of a, a, um, a sharing of the understanding which might be uh, took, taken generally for the approach at the Angewandtes Artistic Research. And therefore we will share with you a, for a next film. The University of Plot Art was founded in 1867, 150 years ago. We are situated in the very city center of Vienna. If you step inside, you don't feel this is a building from the 19th century. It is occupied by students, by teachers. Uh, it is vibrant 350 days a year. It combines a lot of departments focusing on the architecture as well as on fine arts and media as well as uh, on graphic design and fashion and so on. So for me it's uh, like a, uh, a pressure box. What is artistic research? Research is a thing which is happening uh, in sciences and in humanities. And what we're doing is just making art. I love this quote by Alfredo Jar. 99% of art practice is research. We understand that these research projects are important. Art never is only that intuitive way of approaching the world. It's also always the motion of thoughts. Artistic research is the search for new levels of aesthetic dimensions, and it uh, has to, to provide some kind of a documentation, how you get from one level of knowledge uh, to the next one. You'll experience artistic research projects from the University of Applied Arts, from various fields, the dancer, the technician, the digital artist, the philosopher, the architect, the designer. You take all those people in and they're all the community. The content creates the frame. So now, also after this short introduction, I welcome everybody here now uh, in, the, in the meeting, in the coming together, in the Zoom, the focus of, of that very mm, evening event. It's always difficult to find a proper word for this format, actually, <laughs> that one needs to kind of, uh, how, how, to, how to name it, actually. But maybe that's, that's also interesting to find a, a good term for a new thing that's appearing. And definitely the institutional environment at Angewandt is something that constantly tries to find new forms of existence, of being, and of presence. Um, in terms of also like in the first, first film, we've seen this urgency addressed. That needs to be kind of uh, approached and, and, and also taken up to consider it. And then with the specific approaches also in the, in the very uh, generously shared by you um, works of your artistic and research practice. Um, and referring to this institutional setting, I just maybe already briefly framed in a sense of being kind of flexible and, and re uh, in resonance with its uh, complete surrounding. I would love to start with the first question Uh, how would you understand the venture in your or in the research at Angewandte or in your artistic research? And what comes, uh, what, what changes are you considering in relation to the institutional and general conditions? So maybe this tackles more the, the daring question. Uh, maybe, Barbara, may I uh, ask you as vice director uh, for research um, to start with these some words for the institutional. Uh, context as well. Yeah, thank you, Alexander, and welcome to everybody who shares these evening hours with us. 
Um, to come back to your question, the, the venture, the, the risk that artistic research takes is for me first and foremost, that which applies to any type of research, the deep engagement with questions and problems with an open and completely uncertain outcome. Um, in this respect, the term there, which was so chosen for the conference is a very central one, only to risk and to dare enable us to develop and mm -hmm. to change, to transform. And uh, the obvious challenges that we face demand this ability to question paradigms, to expand and open up horizons and to break routines. We, it needs the courage for that. Mm. Um, there is a need to constantly renew our relationship to knowledge, to time, to which is other, to that which is possible. So there is a need to take that risk. Mm. And uh, from the artist's perspective, a risk maybe can also be seen in the established systematics and logics of research. So we all know these discussions we had at art school about artistic research. Um, how do these logics relate to artistic practice uh, when both terms are brought together in the term artistic research? Um, however, I'm convinced that this conference, and we have seen this already with on these first contributions, and that this conference with all the diverse and certainly exciting and ex uh, impressive examples of artistic research practice will once again show that this risk is worthwhile and that this hurdle has been taken. Mm -hmm. We know artistic processes and artistic research uh, contribute to broadening and altering our understanding of the world and what is around us and who we are. Um, now, coming to the second part of to your question, the institutional conditions. For me, as, as part of the rectorate as an artist, art school has have to create structures to facilitate artistic research and of course take action. Art schools must offer space for experimental and also radical forms of practices and also maintain spaces to ensure that encounter and debate takes place. Art schools need to be a space, as we have heard in Emma's talk, that supports uh, potentiality, to quote again, mm -hmm. it. And uh, uh, we, we need spaces that support learning and unlearning experiences, which means learning processes that transform the preset requisites that are supposed to be fundamental. So the, the task of art school consists for me in ensuring that there is a correlation between the, these experimental and also radical forms of practice that exists in the arts on the one hand, and on the other hand, the inconsistent, asymmetric, and also unforeseeable relationships that constitute uh, a most complex word. So to end with that, it must be a central concern of a university of an art school to continually work to ensure conditions that allow to act beyond the measurable, the data, to preserve them where they are threatened by being impaired and to create them when they do not yet exist. So we are all called upon to keep these spaces alive and open 
spaces of thought, spaces of encounter, and spaces for action. Yeah, thank you, Barbara. Um, maybe this is a good line also to connect this to Margarita, to your work, like in, in terms of like ludic, ludic approaches and, and, and game design, so to say. How, how would you frame this in the context of artistic research and your own practice, like mm. challenging institutional or settings or, or inventing settings? Yeah. Dare and, and risk is a necessity of play also. So you have to dare something to, uh, to, to motivate others also to participate and to play with you. And, and this was one of the uh, main moves, I would say, that I, I really got highly interested when approaching artistic research also, that it was a participative endeavor always. Mm -hmm. And um, we had to get over certain fears also. Um, so uh, with this, this daring and risk, it is a difficult, difficult term because I don't, uh, I have high risk patients in, in the team, for example, of the research project. And that's why in the clip you could see we, we were early jumping into this um, um, remote way of, and that was one reason that we did weekly broadcasts and I developed this format with the colleagues very often to, to connect them and not to risk what you really have at risk. It, it's touching your life and your reality. And in the, in the background, you, you also see the um, um, S in brackets and then care, so scare wolf, a scare wolf parlor game that we performed last year. I was doing the ludic method surveys at the Centrum Focus Forschung and um, I was inviting a robot for this soiree. And this is the care Android. You might remember, Alexander, you were taking place in this reenactment of a 1900s um, parlor game. As a, um, it was, it's called a care, Scare Wolf, which is an erotic game in, in a way, because the aim is to touch somebody. And it is also impossible to touch these machines of care, which is a, a ridiculous thing that's this small consumer bot the Android pepper, and it is so expensive that it's forbidden to touch it. And so imagine how, and this machine is considered to care about elderly people. So from devices of play to technologies of care, do we dare do existing machines? And I was happy to invite the friend, uh, Oliver Schurer from the TU who said, okay, you can touch it, you can ru ruin it more or less. We have no more insurance anyway, because we opened the box. Mm -hmm. So it's always, also if you dare to open certain boxes, mm -hmm. Is it your iPhone? Is it your electronic yeah. device? Is it artistic research per se? Then you have no more guarantee. Also, and that's what I like to dare with such a yeah. playful. Approach. It's a it's an intriguing attempt. If you dare to open the box, then it becomes fun. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and then you lose the guarantee also from the proprietary society. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's not no more in the capitalist logic, but it's important. Yeah. So, Nicolas, how do you dare to open the box of uh, of your practice? You're very, very closely, very often in working in collaborative uh, settings, and uh, with your with your film, you exposed yourself in a rather yeah in an atmosphere, which wasn't too much collaborative, but it was institutional. So, uh, maybe there are too many. Uh, uh, m m moments already in my question. So let's come back to the, how do you open the box of your artistic practice in relation to research or the other way around? Maybe, <clears throat> maybe I, uh, hello to everybody, but first I, I, I think I would have to say something like maybe to frame the, mm -hmm. the video, um, which was kind of an abbreviated version of a practice which is part of an ongoing um, yeah, please. Yeah, research project called Contingent Agencies, which I initiated together with Alex Atiaga. And the idea of that research project is actually to get in touch with something which we're kind of on a daily practice constantly um, experiencing 
and what we name like as you said like an atmosphere or a mm. mood or in German there's this beautiful word Stimmung um, which is related also to us yeah to a certain something at a place at a situation mm. um, and so we all experience that but then the question is how could you notate it yeah how mm. could you kind of grasp it yeah um, um, find words or other signs for it too and this this question drives us yeah to understand kind of the, the agencies which are at work and so what we s saw is my in my one of my main practices is drawing but what i drew is not what i saw sitting in the main courtyard at Vorderetzollamstrasse. It was kind of the acoustic atmosphere, the sounds, I focused on the sounds, um, contributing to that Stimmung uh, in this big open space where the light comes from above. And um, there is a difficulty actually, uh, because it uh, quite easily becomes kind of the sensory overload. Uh, when you open up to that kind of environment and situation with this kind of very simple practice as drawing. Mm -hmm. So um, for me, um, a kind of a very kind of daring thing in this uh, research project is also um, you, as it's kind of working with quite a fundamental approach of, of phenomenological um, uh, approach, you you are always part of, so to say, the object of research. Yeah, um, you can't kind of um, take a step back almost. Yeah, so um, in that sense, you enter in a quite um, strong and uh, 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 um, in intense exchange. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, with the environment. Um, and um, so the thing is that you actually um, find ways or try to find ways to talk about this very conditio humana yeah? um, of being in the world mm -hmm. and uh, at a very specific point, at a very specific situation, mm -hmm. um, which um, I think is, is something which we, we actually, or I think it's just very helpful yeah, mm -hmm. to reestablish these connections. It's kind of, you open the box and you lose the guarantee for you in this very environment. Yeah, I mean, you get a lot of information from a place because yeah, you kind of, uh, kind of um, your feelers, your antennas, yeah, um, suddenly start to, to roll out, yeah, mm -hmm. and you become, uh, uh, yeah, part of that, situation uh, in a very intensive way. Yeah, good. Thank you, Nikolaus. Uh, and now to uh, Lucy, uh, to the Applied Foreign Labor uh, Performance Laboratory. Um, how do you, how do you take this? You're, you're muted. I think it's a good attempt, uh, as Nicholas, you just did to reframe maybe mm -hmm. the short video. Mm -hmm. And um, Barbis, uh, Ruda, and Peter Kotzek, we decided somehow to also refer to the situation here at the Postsparkasse in terms of testing. So we're in a testing phase. And what does this mean to test, right? Mm -hmm. we, we, we try just to to think who we are in liminal spaces when we don't know exactly when we start from one point and we move to the other and we risk actually, we risk uh, things that are given. So um, when we go back um, to the idea of the liminal, which is so close to the performative is that we, we try to create situations in which we allow others to become others. We allow to be in an institution, but within this institution, we can turn into somebody who we haven't been before. Mm -hmm. But this will allow us to reconsider what we stand for. Mm -hmm. So um, the Rite 
passage, which uh, is probably to those that know play and game, a very crucial term that doesn't come from um, art theory, that doesn't come from um, the aesthetic philosophy, but that comes from anthropology, is that we acknowledge that rituals have a great meaning in terms of emergence and um, acquiring innovation. So talking from the perspective of the Angewandte Performance Lab, which is such a new endeavor and risking and testing right now, I think we, we, we tried to um, also see ourselves in this bizarre situation of a testing, constantly testing environment, um, but also to, to acknowledge that we constantly have to reaffirm who we are in an institution, in a society. Mm -hmm. And uh, going back to the, the term of rite de passage. Um, so in this video, just let me just quickly go back to it. Then we have, you know, test subjects that start um, with a moment of a separation phase. So we leave a moment that we, we share, that we know, we go into a transformation phase where things we know collapse. So we know this is that, and this is that, and then they become the same. And then actually the moment in between becomes so important. Is this this, is this that? So this is what uh, we call in ritual theory, the transformation phase when we really don't know where we belong to. And then we have the incorporation phase where we have learned again and newly again to gain different perspectives on given um, points of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And I think this is why um, the Angewandte Performance uh, Lab is, is so risking, daring, risk-taking, testing as we try to ask ourselves who we are in the moments of in-between and in-betwixtness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, w w wonderful. Um, thank you. Uh, Barbara, you want to maybe say something to that as well? Like starting with your remarks on like the risk-taking, the institutional structures, and now hearing from the practices of colleagues inside this institutional framing, how does it resonate with you? Well, this is uh, exactly what I think is uh, the potential of mm. uh, the arts, uh, artistic practice, and also the research practice mm. to see everything that we seem to know uh, again and mm. uh, go into a distant mode and uh, reflect by through our artistic practice. I mean, there was something else that. Um, I took from Emma's uh, lecture and uh, an answer that was a, a question that was not answered. This was about authorship, mm -hmm. uh, because Margarete, you said uh, it's a participatory practice. Uh, Nicolaus, uh, you are doing the same. The, the APL does it. So, um, how do you? see this question of authorship that was asked by Bashak and uh, was not part of the discussion anymore because of time. Too surprising to, to, to ask that. Nicholas, yeah, yeah, no, I can say something because it's also, I think, uh, related to Alexander's question from before um, about the coll collaborative. In, in my case, uh, uh, in, in the contingent agencies research project, actually, um, with kind of opening up to the various uh, uh, moment and situation, um, the surrounding actually becomes something like a co-author. Mm. So it's a bit of um, this kind of humbleness kind of stepping back um, out of this um, um, anthropocentric point of view um, of um, that that it's us doing everything yeah but also become aware of that there are a lot of agencies around also doing mm -hmm. doing things yeah mm -hmm. and um, 
which we have the tendency um, to think everything is about us, yeah, mm -hmm. and we we create the arts and so on, um, uh, and and especially um, in 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 my or our research project, I, I think that's the challenge to actually always become aware of um, mm -hmm. that there is so much around thinking, uh, working, uh, influencing. Um, uh, in, in so to say non-human logics yeah. mm -hmm. but but like yeah. take taking this uh, and also maybe bringing it to the next question is like what what is around that really uh, bothers you that that like we have the introductory video is kind of really uh, highlighting the urgency of action so to say mm -hmm. it is really like a, a strong Uh, immersive uh, piece. Let's let's call it that way. Huh? Uh, so the, it 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 provides provides kind of the need for something. And now the question could be: Is it is it the is it what? How do you relate with your work in in terms of um, urgency, uh, like obvious urgency, like the crisis now, or like like uh, other crises now that we seem to have forgotten, or so to say, or is it more like the The stone or the, the, the tree, which is like um, a, a question, mm. posing a question on you. So what, what makes your research care and your artistic research care about? Huh? I, I've seen that Margarete wanted to say yeah. something, maybe to the, to the point already raised. Yes. Um, um, yeah, but I can do both in one. Yeah, please. Mm -hmm. Because it's uh, for me also this then share, did you say? And now their share no? yeah. and authorship I still want to react also to this question or this point a bit I, I wasn't I think it is a, a good point also so that's a question also what you share and also how this connection with non-human agents happens mm -hmm. so here I have a connection with a basil which I was growing myself, which is a small, very small plant. But it is a, a bioponic system also that I connected in the play with the device. That was one uh, project where also students were involved in Zurich that, uh, that I just finished or did. And I think here it's also a collect, what, who is the author of the object generated together? The non-human agent is the environment, as Nicola said, but it's also the plant or the environment and also showing our inner states and uh, connecting this to our environment. So here we are on a safe side also mm -hmm. to answer that because we answer very abstract. Uh, I think the question was also meant very precisely in the logic of art and as appropriatory logic also. It becomes more complicated then, that is true. How do we proceed? And the question is then also, what is then the artifact in the, or the art object or the epistemic object itself or the... Um, The discourse object, as we discussed it in the artistic research uh, program also. Here it is then not so important who is the author or where's the authorship of the object. I didn't refer so much to the film in the beginning because it's already uh, three quarters of an hour ago, but it was also seven steps. I wanted to share a walk with the device when I went through the wood. And that's what I really cared also. That's not how you use such electronic device, but you also can connect with nature and with your environment and also tackle questions that connect to us directly, also to our human condition that also was mentioned already. And uh, so, yeah, so this is, of course, um, a hybrid of an answer, but it touches these two points also with the collective authorship. That's why we also form research groups, I would say. That's how I would see it. It helps. And also that the pieces, the works become something different. I'm not sure how it is with the performance then, who is owning then this performance form or so, or is this no question at all? I cannot say. I, I hand over the question. Yeah, but maybe, may, yeah, other. please, P Peter, maybe you want to say something, could say something to that? Maybe I could <clears throat> add something to Nicholas, what Nicholas mentioned shortly, uh, or you Post a question as well. What does the surrounding do with you, <laughs> with yourself, and uh, the ones that don't know um, Angewandte or the new places, um, Angewandte places? I'm sitting here in our uh, new 
building or the building we, we Angewandte is renting at the old PSK. It's, it's an architectural icon, I would say. And uh, this is where APL, Angewandte Performance Lab, is located. And imagine to work in a space like this. Um, incredible, really. Yeah. And <clears throat> maybe to let you know a little bit um, my background or my, my roots in Angewandte, I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm coming from a 100% teaching um, background here in, in, at Angewandte, teaching at uh, Transmedia Art for almost 16 years. And now I'm working here at, at APL. And what is really new is, and what I experience here in this space is that so many powers are brought together in, 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 for, in this transversal platform, I would call it, yeah. Um, this is, this is, um, this is an ex really new experience for me. And, and um, yeah, maybe Babis, you could add to this uh, as well, because from, from the back, <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting behind here also in the great Casa Halle. And as you can see, the glamorous feeling of the building is already transforming itself onto our skins. So this for sure is um, a very um, yeah, transversal transgression from architecture to body. That's what I have to add here. Well, if you allow me quickly just to answer again from the perspective of ritual or liminal spaces, I think that um, what we share um, from the perspective of the APL is this, this basic uh, curiosity towards situations that focus on processes mm -hmm. and that the performative arts and performance and performativity knowledge on performativity always looks on these liminal processes. So we understand that we can enter a phase, we can look at things in a great moment of risk because we know there are boundaries. It, this is a special moment. So we can have something where we start from, we look at something, but then in particular, the performative knowledge and arts, and of course, also other art forms know that, but then the performative arts are related to specific knowledge of time-based arts. So we can have critical reflections, we can have play game, we can have choreography, we can have moments where we encounter ourselves in high moments of risk, of confrontation, of uh, not knowing each other. But then we also know how to go back in a way and then meet each other again, integrating this knowledge back to where we came from, but having become some, somebody else. And this is something I find incredibly interesting also in this, this format of the Angewandte Performance Lab, that we all come from so many different angles, mm -hmm. how we understand performance, how we understand performativity. But what many of us seem to share is this incredible respect and vulnerability of mm -hmm. this liminal space. Yeah. Barbara, do you want to add to this something? In term point of view of like a strategic development of the environments? It's more that I'm fascinated by having their, seeing their faces changing. And <laughs> of course, uh, having said before that art makes possible to the rediscover <laughs> the world we, we live in and that we have already experienced, I'm, uh, I, I, I know the place where you are. And from the very moment now, I, I somehow is, uh, it's possible to see it from a different angle. I'm not sure, am I happy that how you change or, <laughs> or, or what happens? So this liminality <laughs> is, is an interesting situation. Uh-huh, <laughs> you disappear. <laughs> well, they silver us. May I add mm -hmm. on to that point? I think 
what uh, we can say it without words that through the, the means of performance art, we can speak through the body and through action. Mm -hmm. And this is a very powerful resource. And I think mm -hmm. it's also one part of RPL really mm -hmm. uh, developing yeah, performative concepts that speak through performance within mm -hmm. the institution, but also to the outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One question, you were so beautifully framing it, Lucy, with the liminal spaces. I, I was touched by that. Uh, I wondered also <clears throat> what I wanted to share with you. I often, I don't know if I, I said, what their care, sh their care share, and then I care about what is the, sub, uh, the subliminal. I was very much interested always in the subliminal that comes up, it becomes more and more difficult to become somebody else. It's no more allowed <laughs> because we have to be traced after the test, tricked uh, necessarily. We have to be identified even with the video, etc. No? So I wonder what is then this subliminal space that you open, no? which is good. So it's, it's not a subconscious, there is also a subliminal a space that, that comes up and that we are sharing now at this moment a subliminal space also all of us in different states of mind feelings in different environments and settings so I think it's interesting you, you were just triggering this and that's mm -hmm. fine that it's also can happen in such a space I would say the, the one that we are sharing now so yeah it was only a, a association I wanted to share right now Maybe Lucy, sound? Yeah. I, uh, no, no, I, I was just curious to more understand where your um, um, vision goes towards the term um, subliminal, because the limes as the border um, can be understood in cultural terms, in philosophical terms, in um, um, biological terms, in anatomical mm. terms. Mm. And subliminal, to me, the first association comes to me is somehow subkutan, but this is probably mm -hmm. not what you think about. Yeah, as <clears throat> I was working before in, a, in another project on subliminal messages, yeah, which um, that you have in, in environments where, where you not really give the message that you want to give, but you have a subliminal message also. Mm -hmm. And then the sublime also comes in. So it is only the same etymological source with the limes, the border that we have, but it's the same. We have a certain border that we have to accept, and then we also address these un, 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 unspoken realities and this is because you wanted to address th that that's why or how I, I try to to connect this and the original question now for this round also from Alexander was also to ask us what, what we care about mm -hmm. and to have this uh, um, connection of what is not yet spoken out what is mm -hmm. yet not yet there which is under this limes yeah also not in, in terms of space but of uh, consciousness of public discourse and of a political discourse maybe even so in this direction I, I was mm -hmm. thinking that this can be also addressed beyond or, uh, or triggered by the individual research state so that's um that's it's quite that's quite interesting also in terms of like the institutional setting the subliminal identity of this institution which is there also also shaped and changing via the artistic and via the research practice at all at the universe at this institution or at other institutions or systems of uh, of collaboration expanding the, going beyond or below some expectations which are uh, the the, the silent discourse actually nobody talks about, but suddenly the, the things appear in a sense um, that, that wasn't in a sense, a sense that wasn't felt before or seen before uh, as, as something uh, present. Um, for that reason, maybe Margarete also, um, for the, for the, you are also um, a key figure, that, that key figure for the artistic research PhD program, uh, which brings also the artistic research to uh, to kind of like the course settings and the study programs at the university. Uh, would you kindly also share with us briefly something about the reflective quality of that endeavor here as an institutional force or challenge? 
I was speaking now a lot already, so that I don't want to make so much time there. And I, I come to back to it later a bit, but I really think it is about this uh, reflexive, uh, discursive mm -hmm. reflection that is uh, one of the main mm -hmm. uh, forms uh, and, and very strong forms. And that's why I called the video that we made for the um, Neuromatic um, Game Art Project also a discursive reflection in seven chapters where I was walking through the different chapters and these were sort of emanations mm -hmm. and this discursiveness that emerges out of the art practice also mm -hmm. is, is one of the main um, which, which again is something very collaboratively developed isn't it because yes. uh, in your work and also in the course I think this exchange on like measuring out the opportunities of the subliminal is something which is kind of a a key challenge and providing the structures for that in a sense as institution. Maybe Nicolas, you also have something to, to share with us, uh, how you care about this question in collaborations. I mean, there's a lot to say. I think uh, one thing is <clears throat> what was already mentioned is, um, I mean, we speak, but while we speak, there is a lot of other things said without even being outspoken. Uh, I think Emma framed it so beautifully in her um, uh, keynote. And uh, interestingly, she also um, took this uh, read the passage um, <laughs> a, a model uh, for, um, uh, for kind of um, opening up uh, her, her, her thoughts and, and research projects. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, it's really uh, uh, the interesting thing about artistic research is um, not to kind of uh, completely analyze what is found, but also kind of, and that is also something she addressed, which I found important, is that um, to that there is kind of um, kind of an unsolvable rest <laughs> uh, left, yeah. So that not everything is kind of explained, yeah, but there, there it needs this kind of yeah, this kind of acknowledging, this kind of buffer zone that where maybe one cannot enter, yeah, um, to to make everything kind of um, 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 yeah work, yeah, mm -hmm. um, uh, in the way it does. So it's kind of just. Uh, um, Allowing also to be in this uh, um, in a state of of staunen, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is really important. Just and not just to kind of explain or note town or the, or or um, um, kind of um, drag to the light, yeah. So for me, it's important that there is some kind of um, unsolvable rest. Mm -hmm. um, it's very crucial for me in, in artistic research. Nevertheless, I think artistic research could uh, um, open these kind of uh, uh, spaces um, for, for this um, shift of paradigm we have to do in the, next, uh, in the next years, which is so necessarily needed to kind of completely reorganize uh, our ways of thinking in the sense of that we really question what matters, yeah? what, what, what matters to be on this planet. And I think there, in that sense, artistic research uh, will not uh, kind of uh, save the planet, but it could open these kind of micro models yeah, for re-establishing our connection um, towards, towards our environment. Mm -hmm. To retake the things again anew uh, in certain positions. Mm -hmm. And it is also important, just briefly said, that here at Angewandte, having this as a exemplar, exemplar, exemplary takes for the work here, also in the area of architecture, of like fine arts, of photography, of like all the units here at the university, also in the, in the areas of the scientific uh, professions and, and fields, this is taken a really, always trying to take the things beyond. And it's not, it's not the question like you, Nicholas just said, to solve everything and drag everything into the light. I think the quality of research may be scientific or artistic research is actually the point at things that are not known and not 
doing as uh, the, pretending to know everything because that, this would kind of use a lot of contradiction in, in terms of like other, other that was, would provide a lot of problems if one would take the, the, the field of research as such as the um, yeah, problem solve, check, it's over, it's out. Mm. It's, never, it's never the case. It's always like this, this like transformation of understanding that the modes for that and then by, by this transformative work um, maybe find also new explanations for the, diff for the ways of understanding differently yeah? in a sense, so to say. Barbara, maybe you want to like also say something um, like maybe also everybody now in a final round uh, says something about uh, the, the yeah, how, how should I phrase that, that it's not too much, uh, the challenges societally in a daring way that could be or need to be taken up uh, for the next next steps to come, so to say. Yeah? What is uh, I love the frame. What actually is the thing that that worries you most, or your most your rigor is uh, um, really triggered uh, to go forward. Uh, I would love to uh, get a, a, an answer to that question from Barbara. But maybe uh, at the, la the last one, uh, she would be the last one where she, her rigor wants to take the university in the next step. Uh, let, let's start uh, with, uh, uh, with Barbies here, please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, that the, the theme of the, of the conference as well, to dare and to share are quite um, important points. Mm -hmm. to dare to do something that's not been done before and that's a certain drive and mm -hmm. to dare to do things and, and be bold and, and do art because mm -hmm. um, do art and through art you can really change things, mindsets or open up new perspectives mm -hmm. and mostly also to share and to, to maybe also develop these things together but also to implement that together. So, mm -hmm. so be this doing and action and speaking through performative means in this mm. sense is um, the answer. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a melody of boldness here, it's a <laughs> sense. Uh, Lucy, you want to add to that? Yeah, I think I would like to just re-emphasize that maybe subliminal spaces mm -hmm. are accessible through rituals that create the moment for a liminal space in which we encounter that we don't look at a dichotomy, mm -hmm. you know, just only from one perspective that the arts and an aesthetic um, enlightenment, aesthetic knowledge, aesthetic um, gaining of understanding is so much related to sharing that we can shift in a careful way perspective without losing our positions or ourselves and that the art still can provide moments where we completely shift in what we look at mm -hmm. and what we experience and what the object and the subject is and this ability this pure ability of the ritual which is so ancient mm -hmm and is in some way related to the arts and its mm. rich embedded in symbols, um, in the bad, for bad, for good. We have to be careful, of mm. course, how we use symbols, how we use rituals, but in a, in a careful reflective environment of um, that kind, I, I feel incredibly, um, yeah, um, challenged in a good way to share such kind of experience that are for everyone I think always also a moment of risk when we, mm. we we shift the perspective good thank you Lucy Peter please mm, beautiful words Lucy thank you <clears throat> I would like the university to um, be a place uh, where we can go on um, learning and unlearning from each other. Mm. That's something I found out the last 
years and especially the last year mm -hmm. that there is a really great potential here in this house. Um, yeah, both learning and unlearning. Sounds simple, but it's very difficult actually. Mm -hmm. And I want this to go on. Thank you, Peter. Nikolaus, please. Mm. Well, specifically, uh, I think for the for the arts and uh, and and the University of Applied Arts, which is housing so many kind of approaches uh, um, of aesthetic practices, I th for me, as I and that links maybe to what I said before, is also to to yeah to acknowledge the the paradoxical, the absurd, the the non logical, those things which actually cannot be kind of put in word words uh, but can be felt yeah on a body mind level so in that sense i think also to to take our human body which has developed over millions of years kind of uh, as the, the the most valuable resource we have yeah and for sure it can be augmented but i think there's already a lot to be found already uh, in our flesh and blood and our nerve systems mm -hmm. and brains and knees and and little fingers, yeah, and to to um, yeah to to use it, yeah. That that's a great bridge to Margarita, I think. Mm. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Nicolas. Yes. Yeah, I, I take the, the, <laughs> the little finger, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, for me, it is important also um, to share again uh, a absinthe fountain with you on a, on a soiree for example, yeah, mm -hmm. in, in the spaces that we share also. So also it is switching a role, yes, when I'm, because you asked me for this, that's what I did as professor of artistic research, <laughs> Sir, serving <laughs> and sharing the drink of the ludic society. We used to have this in, uh, in our club evening, so to say, always as a drink, like a historic reference and as a play to open this fountain also, so that you see a dynamic. So it is also a sort of this, um, uh, I, I take up also the, the, the ritual from, from Lucy again, and uh, also from the performative practices, this, this, um, this network that we have then also really um, among us in this uh, um, yeah, sharing, serving, sharing, caring, daring to share also in such a situation where we don't do it like a role play, but also reflecting our roles. That is for me a very important step also where we go. And this also opens the magic circle of play in a ludic society that we still have as our realities right now, I would say. And then we are able to jump into this agency where we also really can act as agents of change. And the artist also as agent of change that really takes a serious role in this artistic research process. Thank you for the keywords. <laughs> Thank you, Margarete, for, for, for completing them. Um, Barbara, and now I invite you to complete the session. <laughs> um, well, there are so many things with your, rigor that with your like rigorous idea. idea. But, uh, um, uh, uh, I, when I said that uh, uh, the university is called upon uh, to keep these spaces alive, the spaces of thought and encounter and action, then I think um, that um, this in terms of systematic practice and the structure that, around, that surrounds it, this means that uh, um, on the part of each individual maintaining uh, the will to be alert and critical with regards to one's own established routines is necessary. And that, um, of course, seeing it from an institutional uh, point of view, also, uh, we really have to be aware um, and be uh, critically self-reflecting enough and see um, where are there unquestions, uh, unquestioned complacency or institutional inertness. So I think uh, every day uh, one, one has to question 
uh, their own routines and um, uh, for example, I can tell you what I took with me because I know that when Emma mentioned uh, uh, Iridrogov potentiality, all this vocabulary, and Stephen asked, well, is this that then maybe again a name of an institution, a new mm -hmm. paradigm or a telos? I really started to question myself. And so I think uh, although one has prepared a mindset, uh, it's important to uh, reflect uh, it critically every day. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, uh, now re um, referring again to artistic research, I only can say if um, we know the potential of artistic practices. If we, if we know that uh, they are kind, art can has this, uh, this potential, this uh, potential, potential to transform, to be a ferment. Um, with all these potentials, why could a university, do, uh, uh, not a yeah, university and a society do without it? And uh, this I'm asking myself again and again, if we still have to stand up for this uh, artistic practice. Thank you very much, Barbara. Thank you very much, everybody, for being here in this roundtable discussion. And I thank you very much, especially for you contributing with those generous uh, films you prepared for the meeting, which was really great and a lot of work. So thank you really for that. And um, I think this is not, that's not the end of our steps and walks together. Let's keep it on and let's also connect with the others at the conference or beyond. Please feel free to get in contact with us. We'll link and start collaborations with all of you, maybe not with all of you on the same time, but we'll see good connections appear. Um, and for now, I think I just want to briefly thank also uh, send my uh, thanks also to Thomas Mitterberg for making this technically work for Karl Salzmann, who did prepare a lot of those uh, actions with the films, etc., And of course, uh, Mariana Mondelos, as always, preparing events in, in, a, in a stylish and good way. So I think that, that may it be for now, for, for you out there uh, and for us out there as well, but somewhere else. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you. Bye.